Good morning, church. Welcome to worship on this beautiful winter morning. It is good for us to be here. We're so glad you're starting your day in worship with us. Um, Special welcome to those of you who are gathering with us online. Uh, Thank you all for being here. Um, Today um, is a second Sunday, and that means our second Sunday jazz trio is back with us today. It's great to have you. Uh, Mike is joined again by our our second Sunday jazz regulars, Jim Rudolph on drums and Rob Gary on bass, and they're sharing with us this morning some of the gospel sounds of Georgia-based, Georgia-born pianist and composer Thomas A. Dorsey, not to be confused with Tommy Dorsey. Um, And uh, so we are looking forward to more of that. We'll be singing one of our favorites by Thomas Dorsey, Um, at the end of our service today. So um, thanks again for starting your day in worship with us. I want to make a a couple of announcements. Uh, The Valentine's Tea and Fashion Show yesterday was a rousing success. Uh, We raised over $2,000 and counting for uh, Fair Tide. So thank you all. Uh, for everything that, that uh, it really takes a community to, to do something like that. But I'm going to lift up um, Kathy and Tim Rooney and Melissa and Paulette in the, in the kitchen and uh, Tom and Linda Barron. Um, and, uh, and, and Cassie Barron for her creative um, help with the, uh, with the decorations that are down there. So. Um, th- it, was, uh, it was fabulous. And, and thanks to our table hosts and all our guests and people who baked. And um, it, was, uh, it was just amazing. We, we had over 100 people downstairs and, um, and raised some, some excellent money for, for Fair Tide. But we're not done yet because today is uh, Super Bowl Sunday. And we're receiving donations because it's the second Sunday of the month. The Footprints Food Pantry box is rolled out in the vestry, ready to receive your non-perishable food items. Um, And if you forgot to bring a non-perishable food item, you can drop um, a check or cash into that bowl, uh, that soup pot, on the table as as you leave this morning uh, for our Super Bowl of Caring, which which helps us tackle hunger um, throughout our community. So... We thank you in advance for your generous donations to that. And we have Super Bowl subs. I think there are a few left, um, but and we're also looking for uh, maybe a few more hands to uh, to help with that. Tom and Linda are greeting downstairs, but if you um, if you have not ordered one or want an extra, see see Tom and Linda uh, following worship today. Lent begins on Wednesday. And this year, it happens to um, fall on Valentine's Day. Um, But we're still going to have a service here at Second Christian at 7 o'clock. It is at 7 o'clock, so you can go out for an early dinner with your beloved and then come and uh, worship with us here um, at Second Christian. At 7 o'clock, we will be um, having the imposition of ashes as we mark ourselves for the beginning of this Lenten journey. That's all I have to say. There are other announcements and calendar items in your bulletin to which I invite your attention. Let us continue in our worship.
Our call to community is printed in our bulletins. Let us read responsively. Rising, sorry, from the rising of the sun to its setting, God speaks to us and summons us. God gathers us in covenant. God glory shines forth. Let us worship God. Please stand as you're able as we sing our opening hymn, number 176, Sing of God Made Manifest. God invites us to come to worship as our whole selves, offering us a new beginning day by day and week by week. Trusting in God, let us pray with one voice for transformation and new life. Mighty God, you call to us. You call to the heavens and to the earth in covenant. And so we call to you, be present as we worship, gather us that we may hear your voice and respond to your ways of righteousness. We pray in the power of your Holy Spirit, amen. God's glory shines forth and God judges all things with grace and with mercy. In the renewed life God gives us, may our spirits rise and rise again. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Amen.
Let us prepare ourselves to receive the good news as we pray together. Make ancient words new and lost hopes rise again as you speak the promise to us this day, O Spirit of truth, O life-giving breath. Amen. Our first scripture lesson this morning is taken from the second book of Kings, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Let us listen for the word of God. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. 
Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah ascended in a whirlwind to heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. Let us listen also for the word of God as it comes to us in the gospel according to Mark in the ninth chapter beginning at verse 2. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them, to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Here ends the reading of the lessons. May God bless our reading, hearing, and understanding of these words. Thank you. 
Today is the last Sunday after Epiphany, a season in the life of the church that we talk, we use words like manifestation and appearance of understanding, of revelation. It's a season that begins after Christmas when we have the incarnation, the um, God taking on flesh and, and living with us. And then it, it moves on bit by bit as we are informed about who this Jesus is. And through the season of Epiphany, we hear a lot about light. And we hear little bits and pieces of how this story is going to go. This morning, we have fast-forwarded right to the middle of Mark's gospel. We've spent six weeks getting an idea of who this Jesus is, and I'm going to give you a little quiz there. Who is this Jesus? God's son. What else? What did we learn about Jesus in these past six weeks? Go ahead, shout it out. came to suffer and die. We haven't heard that yet, but that's true. We've, we've, what, have, what have we heard? We've heard that Jesus is a teacher, right? He goes around teaching and preaching in their synagogues. So he's a teacher. He's a preacher. We know that he's a healer. People have been lined up at the door waiting to be healed, waiting to have those spirits cast out of them. So he's an exorcist, too. We learned all of that, and we haven't even gotten out of chapter 1 in Mark's gospel until today. And what we heard today is kind of a bookend for how we began this season of Epiphany. You remember, right, at Jesus' baptism... God speaks to Jesus out of the cloud. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Those are words spoken to Jesus. Those are words that start Jesus on his way in ministry. And today, up on that mountain, God speaks to the disciples this time. God speaks to us. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. It would be really nice if this was kind of like the deal closer. This settled everything. If it ended all the questioning and doubt and disbelief. But it does not. The disciples' failure to grasp who Jesus is persists. And it happens three times, just in chapter 8 and 9, once before this mountaintop experience and twice after. Jesus predicts his suffering and death and resurrection, and these same ones who witness this amazing vision still question still misunderstand, still walk away, still disbelieve. I kind of feel like I'm in good company. Today's story sounds a lot like Jesus' resurrection appearance, right? White robe, ethereal voice, standing there with Moses and Elijah. And it all points us to the cross. It all points us from his baptism and ministry to resurrection and new life, all rolled up in one. And it's smack dab in the middle of Mark's story. He gives us a sneak peek of its ending. And even the ones standing right there missed it. 
right there in front of them. There it was. It's plain as the nose on their face. We sometimes will talk about the imminence of God, right? It's kind of a hard concept to, to wrap our heads around, but it's, it's the, the everywhere-ness of God, the closeness of God. One theologian defined it this way, the glasses on your face, the rings on your ear, what you search for even though you have it already. That is the imminence of God. How many of you have ever looked for your glasses for 10 minutes <laughs> only to realize you're there? How many of you have walked out to your car looking for your car keys and there they were in your hand? That may not be a God thing, that might be something else, but it's that same sort of thing, looking for something even though you already have it. God's imminence, God within, God's nearness, God with us says that God is like that. Even though you search for God, God is already near. With us, in us, working through us. God is with, up, with us in our worship, in our music, in our prayers, in our fellowship. God is with us when we gather at the font and at the table. God is with us all the time. All the time. God is with us in our work, in our play, in our homes, in our schools in the ordinary, everyday experiences and in those extraordinary mountaintop experiences, in those times of deep pain and loss, God is with us. Present to us, present through us, that's the promise that we got six weeks ago. And that's the promise. Call, we talk a lot about call. That's kind of a theological expression for, for, for what our job is, for what God is inviting us to do. Our task, our call as followers of Christ, as people of faith, is to take that light that we have received in this season of Epiphany, that light that we have seen, that light that is now within us, that has been placed within us, that has made us stop in awe, a light that we cannot explain or control, but it is in us. Our call is to reflect it back, to let that light shine in the world. Easy, right? Not easy. Lent begins in just a few days. Lent is a time of preparation and reflection, a time of self-examination and renewal. My hope for us this year is that this will be a time for us that we just can't keep to ourselves. What happened here yesterday was us not being able to keep it to ourselves. We had the doors were open and people are just walking in. Can I see the sanctuary? Welcoming all people. That's what I hope we can continue through this Lent. 
It's that work of letting our light shine. When we can strip away those things that mask God's presence within us and let that light shine so that all the world will see. All the world will see and it'll be right there. You can't miss it. It's plain as the nose on your face. Amen. As we come before God in prayer today, I invite you to lift up names and situations that should be in our prayers today and through this week. Scott. We will keep Dana in our prayers. Rita, Rita and Victoria, we'll keep Neil and Chris in our prayers today, I'm, I'm sorry I'm not We'll keep Rhea in our, in our prayers and, for the, and the friends and family of Mike. Mike, okay. John. And what's the last name? Casey. Uh, family and friends of Jack Casey, um, who was one of the Marines killed in the helicopter crash. Um, he lives um, he's from Dover. So we'll keep the Casey family in our prayers for sure. Thank you. Also prayers for um, Darwin and Sarah and for Don. Are there other prayers on our Facebook feed this morning? Lori? People of Gaza. People of Gaza. Let us pray. Once again, O oh God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for this day for gathering us here in this place and across the miles. We thank you for each and every person who is part of this new thing you have created today. We worship you, O oh God, with songs of praise and words of prayer, with ears that listen for you to speak your saving truth into our lives. We worship you in the silent spaces where we struggle for hope and for courage. And we long for a glimpse of your glory, the glory that shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it the glory that touches lives with beauty so holy that it heals the wounded soul, the glory that gives strength to the weary and confidence to the hopeless. We who stumble and fall so often seek you, longing for your light to shine upon us and through us, Dazzle us with your holy love. Draw us into your purifying presence. Speak your transforming truth. Then grant us grace to live every moment changed by such glory, daring to live with hope and courage and love 
reflecting the life and light of Jesus, through whom your glory shines in the most unexpected ways. We pray again for peace in our world. Shine your light on Gaza, on the West Bank, on Israel and Ukraine. Shine your light on Sudan and Yemen and Syria and Iraq. Break our hearts over and over again to the senseless violence and suffering and move us to raise our voices to work tirelessly for peace. We pray your abiding presence and comforting peace with those who grieve. We pray for Rhea and the friends and family of Mike, the friends and family of Jack Casey, and of the others who died in that helicopter crash. We pray for those who are sick and lonely and lost, for Dana and Rita and Victoria, for Neil and Chris, Darwin and Sarah, for Don, for those whose names we lift up to you now in silence and those whose needs are known to you alone. We pray also for this church, this gathering of your people, giving thanks for the ways we continue to extend an extravagant welcome to learn together how to be your disciples and to go out into the world doing what you call us to do. And humbly we pray for ourselves. Guide us, O God, always to seek your will and your way and to listen when you speak. Hear these and all our prayers, Almighty God, for we lift them as always in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to be bold and say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We have come to the time in our worship when we are invited to respond with a financial offering. If you would like to make a financial offering to the, support the ministries of the church, there are plates in the back there. Um, if you're worshiping with us online, you can uh, go to our website and make a safe and secure gift there. Um, but as always, I invite you also to consider ways that you can support the work being done in our community. And today we are um, supporting the work of Footprints Food Pantry and other organizations that are meeting the um, food insecurity needs of our community. So I invite you to uh, make, put a gift in the soup pot in the back there, and uh, those gifts will go out into our community to do work in our name. Let us worship God with all we are and all that we have.
Amen. Let us bless our gifts. Mighty God, you live and you do not leave us. With these gifts, we do not leave each other, but use them in mutual support. Bless those who receive and benefit from these gifts. May they know your presence with them. With these gifts, our prayers rise up to meet you. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 628, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Now, Holy One, go with us wherever you may lead us. Guide us through the wilderness. Protect us from the storm. Bring us home rejoicing at the wonders you have shown us. Bring us home rejoicing once again unto our doors. Amen.